So team, keep it clean. Huge update with the Baltimore Ravens, especially regarding Kyle Hamilton and a lot of other stuff that we got to talk about too. But let's start off with our guy, Hammy. Now we watched yesterday's game and we saw Kyle Hamilton leave the field with an injury, then come back on the field, but then end up leaving the field again. And then he was declared out for the rest of the game. And they said he was declared out with a knee injury. So that had a lot of people freaking out as... I completely understand because that's Kyle Hamilton. He's one of the best players, not only on the defense, but one of the best players on the team, like straight up. And Ravens got a lot of really good players. Uh, but Kyle Hamilton has been amazing in his second year. He has been holding it down. Uh, but let's just read the report on his injury and exactly what it is. This is from Jordan Schultz, and this actually came out a little bit before John Harbaugh's pressing. He said, Raven safety Kyle Hamilton suffered a grade one MCL sprain during Sunday's win over the Rams. Sources tell Bleacher Report. Expect Baltimore to proceed cautiously, but Hamilton shouldn't miss much time, if any. So that is great news. Now, obviously not great news that he's hurt, but the significance or the lack of significance with his injury, that's a beautiful thing because this could have been a lot worse, but it's not especially at this time of the year. Uh, so but the, the, the part where he said Hamilton shouldn't miss much time, if any. If me, just my opinion. I don't know anything, no plugs, no sources, no connects. I'm an NFL outsider. I would think that Hamilton would miss this game against the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Sunday night football, and then be back for the 49ers game. Now, of course, this week, uh, starting on Wednesday when they start practicing, then we'll know a lot more. We'll see if he's out there on the practice field, but I, I wouldn't expect them, the Ravens, to Trevor Lawrence this thing. And I mean, they're two different injuries, obviously, but I don't think the Ravens would throw Kyle Hamilton right back out there. Now, while the Jaguars are in a much different situation than the Ravens, I don't think they would do that, especially how they've been operating with injuries this year. They've been proceeding with a lot more uh, caution. So that's a good thing. So we are very happy that Kyle Hamilton's injury was not severe. It is not season ending. It is not an extremely bad one. I mean, any injury is bad, but this is in, an injury that they can sustain, man, that they, they can hold it down while Kyle Hamilton is out and he shouldn't be out for too long. Now, uh, speaking of Kyle Hamilton being out, Ken McCusick, Film Study Ravens, he put up this stat. He said the Ravens allowed the Rams 4.1 yards per play when Kyle Hamilton was on the field. It's like, okay, it's pretty good. That's really good. Uh, that, that defense was holding it down. They were pretty good. But when Kyle Hamilton was off the field, they allowed 7.7 .7 yards per play. So the, the amount of yards per play almost doubled when Kyle Hamilton was not on the field. If you thought Kyle Hamilton was not a baller, if you thought Kyle Hamilton's impact was lacking, if you thought Kyle Hamilton is not a playmaker, oh, you, you are incredibly wrong but shout out to Kyle Hamilton I'm looking forward to seeing how he does uh when he comes back and how the Baltimore Ravens defense does as a whole uh when he comes back as well now we got a lot more to talk about but first before we get into it make sure because I know y'all like dressing up y'all cars with your rims and your wheels and your rims and wheels so you can do that at powerhousewheels.com and they are taking care of you because if you use code TKIC5 you get five percent off of all orders under a thousand dollars but if you want to go big or go home and you want to order something that's over $1,000, you can use code TKIC10 to get 10% off. Now, don't try to mix and match the code. Don't try to use the 10% code for 10% off of an order under $1,000. do not try to do that because it ain't going to work. Because, again, I would do the same thing. But don't you try it because it ain't going down like that. But go to powerhousewheels.com, and I guarantee you they will take care of you, and you will definitely find something that you like to help your car be nice and team keep it clean. Now, um, some other news, the challenge that Harbaugh threw that had a lot of people scratching their heads when Demarcus Robinson, former Baltimore Raven, by the way, he caught that touchdown in the end zone and Harbaugh threw a challenge flag. And, and they said that he was challenging if Demarcus Robinson stepped out of bounds. And a lot of us, we were looking around like, oh, man. And I said to myself that that was the worst challenge that I might have ever seen in my life. Especially by Harbaugh. They're like, and Harbaugh done had some rough challenges over the years. And I'm like, man, Harbaugh, well, like, what are you doing? How, how is this? What's going on in your head to where you're challenging that? And he wasn't even, like, close to stepping out of bounds. But Harbaugh said that there was a method to his madness. He said that the reason why he threw that challenge flag was to give the Baltimore Ravens more time to prepare for the Rams' two-point conversion. So, I'm like, all right, cool, Harbaugh. If that's what it was, then all right, nice. Because it was basically like calling a timeout. It was, ba it was basically that because they spent all that time looking over it and whatnot. Then they came back and they was like, oh, well, this is not a play that can be challenged. But since he threw the challenge, then the Ravens would lose a timeout. But there was a lot of time that went, went past when, that, uh, when he threw the challenge. So that ended up working out in Harbaugh's favor. And the Ravens, 
yeah, they did stop the two-point conversion. They did. So his plan worked. So I guess Harbaugh, instead of thinking that he was a madman, for that play, he was a genius. So shout out to Hobbs for that. Now, Ronnie Stanley. Ronnie Stanley in his, uh, I was about to say his first game back, but he hadn't missed any time before this uh, or right before this. Um, but in Ronnie Stanley's first game back from the bye week, uh, we were all hoping Ronnie, because we know he had been struggling. Ronnie Stanley had a lot of rough moments throughout this, uh, this season. Um, but in his first game back, in pass protection, he did an excellent job. He did, he did a phenomenal job. He played uh, in pass protection. He only allowed one pressure in 44 snaps. No sacks, only one pressure. That's it. One pressure. Now, um, it got kind of weird toward the end of the game because we saw Pat McCarry out there. And we hadn't heard about a Ronnie Stanley injury. Then we saw uh, Daniel Falele out there. We hadn't heard about a Morgan Moses injury. So Harbaugh talked about it today, and he said it was actually the offensive line coach's idea uh, that they switched switch those guys out so they could be extra fresh, especially toward the end of the game. Uh, as far as Ronnie Stanley and Morgan Moses, since they had been dealing with their own injuries prior to the game. So I was like, okay, that is um, it's quite a strategy there, uh, especially when the offensive line, in my opinion, that, that, that's, that's somewhere where you need cohesion. You need to be in one accord. Uh, so to be flipping guys out, especially at the tackle positions, that's a lot. But that shows that you got a lot of trust in those guys who are the backups to come in and get the job done. And they obviously did it because everything worked because the Ravens won. So shout out to that. Now, this team, um, you see a lot of moments where you feel like this team is selfless. The players are selfless. They're looking out for each other. They are really about team camaraderie. You don't hear a bunch of complaints about, oh, I'm not getting this. I'm not getting that. And that is something that's really, really special. <coughs> Excuse me. And when you have that on a team, you got to appreciate it. And with Zay Flowers, um, uh, Nelson Aguilar, before the Zay Flowers touchdown, which was on third and 17, like after all of that for Lamar Jackson to come out and throw that perfect pass and Zay Flowers to catch it, like for all of that to happen the way that it did was amazing. But anyway, before that Zay Flowers touchdown, Nelson Aguilar, he actually told Lamar Jackson that he felt like the safety uh, would follow him and that that would end up freeing up Zay Flowers. So Nelson Aguilar, a wide receiver, for the Baltimore Ravens. And you know, as a wide receiver for the Ravens, like, you ain't going to get all the passes in the world. Zay Flowers, he'll get his. Odell Beckham Jr., he'll get his now and then. And, and, of course, as the season has gone along, ever since that Seattle Seahawks touchdown, he's been more and more involved every week. But after that, like, you ain't going to really get that much like that consistently. So for Nelson Aguilar, being in a position that he's in, I'm sure he'll be like, oh, no, I, I want the ball at the end of the game. I want to be the one that makes the play. The game-winning touchdown, well, what we thought could have been a game-winning touchdown. I want to be the one to do it. But he's out here looking out for not only another receiver, but a rookie, a rookie wide receiver. And another thing, too, like Nelson Aguilar, he could have been thinking, he could be thinking about the future, like, oh, I'm only on a one-year deal. This could be my last year with the Baltimore Ravens. I, I need to get as much as I possibly can for me. And I get it because it, it's business. It's business, but at the same time, with him looking out for Zay Flowers, somebody who's set to be with the Baltimore Ravens for a while, that, that, that says a lot about him and his character. So shout out to Nelson Aguilar for that. Now, um, speaking of selfless, Rashad Bateman. Now, Rashad Bateman is somebody who I envisioned going into this season. I thought that he was going to be the number one wide receiver, but it just it hasn't worked out like that, uh, unfortunately. Um, but Rashad Bateman, you could think – uh, that Rashad Bateman would be upset. You could think that Rashad Bateman, that even though his numbers aren't looking like he probably envisioned them this season, you could think that he would be like just frustrated and whatnot. And he could be those things, but at the same time, it's all about how you deal with it. He could be lashing out. He could go on Twitter or whatnot and be like, oh, man, I ain't getting no targets. Or, oh, I can only control what I can control. Or he could go put up a, a lyric to a Drake or J. Cole song or something like that and then allow people to decipher exactly what it means. But he ain't do none of that. And yesterday really showed that he's all about the team. Because my guy, uh, Justin, by the way, on Twitter, he put this up and he said, I think it's time for Bateman and the Ravens to mutually part ways. Now, I didn't ask him why he put that up, but I would assume because Rashad Bateman just hasn't been getting the target share that we would have thought that he would get. He hasn't been just making it happen for the Baltimore Ravens like we thought he would this year. Um, but for whatever reason, he put that up 
But Rashad Bateman, he caught wind of that and he responded. He said, all right now, I've been messing with you. Chill out. And he put a laughing emoji. He said, God's timing. And he said, we are winning. We're winning. So Rashad Bateman letting it be known like, look, no, I, I ain't with none of that. And, and, and I mess with you. But the only thing I care about right now is that we're winning. The Baltimore Ravens are winning. And he just, he just laughed it off. And then my guy Justin, uh, by the way, he said, my fault, bro. Just been trying to see you get your bag. And Rashad Bateman responded to that, too. He said, let these dummies keep their opinion. Flock up 100,000. 100,000. So Rashad Bateman letting it be known, like, look, I'm, 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 I, 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 well, he probably does want it. I'm sure he wants his numbers. We know he wants his numbers. But the team is winning. And Rashad Bateman letting him be known like, hey, that's what matters the most to me. That's what I care about the most, the fact that the Baltimore Ravens are winning. And that is a beautiful thing from Rashad Bateman. So shout out to Bateman. And we still hoping that he continues to get more and more opportunities, that, especially on them deep balls. Because Rashad Bateman been making some plays happen. He's been, he been getting open now. Um, just to go back to the, the, the first deep ball that was intended for Rashad Bateman. Initially, when it was live, I thought Rashad Bateman slowed up. And I'm like, oh, he slowed up, man, what happened? Then I saw the replay. Then I thought, oh, Lamar overthrew it. So I'm like, oh, okay, that was on Lamar. But they showed the, the, the whole, the whole All-22. And Rashad Bateman, he actually did slow up a little bit mid-round or whatnot. He slowed up, and then he sped up, and then he slowed up again. But anyway, so but it, it, it's all good. They'll end up getting it. And like I said yesterday, it's so important that they continue to take the shots downfield because you will never get it if you don't keep trying. But I, I know eventually it's going to happen. Yesterday was a big sign that they are on their way. They just got to build off of that, man. They really do. Now, uh, my guy Justin, by the way, the same tweet we talking about, but Lamar Jackson, he actually jumped in, too. Uh, again, the tweet said, I think it's time for Bateman and the Ravens to mutually part ways. And Lamar Jackson said, you must have bumped your big behind head. And then he said, My hashtag mind your business. Love you, though. So Lamar Jackson with a little, not, not even really a jab. You know, it's a playful jab. You know, Lamar, he, ain't, he wasn't serious with that. He's just joking around. Uh, but I did appreciate Lamar chiming in with that and just holding it down for Rashad Bateman, too, man. Uh, Cause I'm sure Lamar like, look, no, 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 I ain't trying to lose no more of my good wide receivers. No, I ain't trying to lose nobody, man. So don't even start talking about that. Don't put it in people's mind. Don't put it in people's head that Rashad Bateman and the Ravens need to mutually part ways. Cause I want Rashad Bateman to stay.